PERKEMBANGAN KECERDASAN BUATAN ATAU AI TELAH MENYENTUH HAMPIR SELURUH ASPEK KEHIDUPAN MANUSIA TELAH BANYAK BERMUNCULAN BERBAGAI PROGRAM AI YANG DAPAT MEMPERMUDAH PEKERJAAN MANUSIA MULAI DARI APLIKASI PENERJEMAH ASISTEN VIRTUAL HINGGA APLIKASI PENGHASIL KARYA SENI NAH SELAIN ITU INOVASI AI JUGA BERPERAN PENTING DALAM PENCAPAIAN TUJUAN PEMBANGUNAN BERKELANJUTAN SEKTOR KESEHATAN MANUSIA Perdagangan bahkan tentu saja hingga komunikasi. Nah lalu seperti apa peluang pemanfaatan AI untuk Indonesia yang lebih maju? Insight akan membahasnya bersama saya, Desi Anwar. Dunia bisnis terus beradaptasi dengan lingkungan yang terus berkembang dengan teknologi dan digitalisasi ekonomi, termasuk di sektor teknologi informasi dan komunikasi. Pemerintah Indonesia telah mempercepat pengembangan infrastruktur digital nasional. Memasuki tahapan baru era inovasi dan digitalisasi, Indosat Urido Hutchison Group berkolaborasi dengan NVIDIA dalam mewujudkan lanskap teknologi dan mendorong Indonesia ke barisan terdepan revolusi artificial intelligence atau AI pada skala global. Dengan menjadi NVIDIA Cloud Provider Partner pertama di Indonesia, Indosat melalui anak usahanya Lintas Sarta siap menghadirkan platform AI Full Stack NVIDIA untuk pelaku bisnis serta memberikan akses ke teknologi GPU termutahir dari NVIDIA. Dengan pusat data high density yang terkoneksi internet publik berkecepatan hingga 400 gigabit per second. Kolaborasi ini menandai momentum penting bagi perjalanan Indonesia menuju bangsa digital global yang didukung kemampuan AI. Dengan memanfaatkan pusat data yang dimiliki, Indosat Uredo Hutchison Group berupaya mewujudkan platform AI yang berdaulat dalam mendorong inovasi lintas ekosistem, sekaligus menempatkan diri sebagai pusat ekosistem digital yang komprehensif, mencakup saluran, konektivitas, pusat data, dan sistem pembayaran. Bukan hanya sebagai pengguna dengan potensi sumber daya manusia yang mumpuni di bidang kecerdasan buatan atau AI, Indonesia diyakini dapat menjadi negara pengembang teknologi AI di tingkat global. Tidak hanya SDM, pengembangan pusat data dan infrastruktur AI juga diperlukan untuk mendukung inovasi dan digitalisasi di berbagai sektor ini tentu saja guna mendorong pertumbuhan ekonomi digital Indonesia lalu bagaimana dukungan yang diberikan oleh para pelaku industri khususnya di bidang telekomunikasi dalam mendukung cita-cita Indonesia ini saya sudah bersama dengan Vikram Sinha President Director and CEO of Indosat Uridu Hutchison untuk membahasnya Vikram how are you? Good, good very Thanks. happy to be here. Yeah, I'm happy to have you and uh, You know, Vikram, let me, before we talk about, um, in my introduction, by the way, how is your Bahasa? Sedikit, sedikit. Sedikit, sedikit, okay. <laughs> But uh, I have to tell you, you know, yesterday my AI version was speaking very fluent Bahasa. Okay. That shows the power of technology. Your AI version. Yes, and it was real. So maybe next time I should interview your AI version. <laughs> <laughs> Then you choose which is better. Okay, but uh, let me just... Uh, Quickly, just to get to know you a little bit uh, better because you have been president, director, and CEO of Indosat Uidu Hutchison since the end of 2021. But you were telling me that you have been in Indonesia for five years. Just give me a little sense of your story and how you see where you fit in and you know where you want to take Indosat in the future by you being in the steering wheel of the company. No, let me let me break this into two part. First, uh, I call myself a global citizen. Uh, I, I come from a, a very middle class family value, born and brought up in India. But for last 15 years, uh, this is my fifth country, Indonesia. So fifth I have, country. Yes. So I have uh, I have worked in Africa. I have done a bit of an Africa safari. I have worked in. Middle East and Southeast Asia, 
I started from a smallest country, Maldives. Then before coming here, I was in Myanmar. And for last five years, I have been in Indonesia. I have to tell you one thing. What, when it comes to hospitality, welcoming culture, Indonesia is the best in the world. You really feel at home. Yeah, glad to the hear that. We smile a lot. Not and only very, that. And we're very friendly and very happy to you know, meet you know, people from other countries. I have to tell you, Jakarta is very what you call jaxel culture. If you have to experience the hospitality of Indonesia, go to rural Indonesia, go to Kalimantan, go to... I went to Tarakan, mm -hmm. two and a half hour flight. People will really make you feel at home. You know, they will want to make sure they do everything possible to make you feel comfortable. That is the true hospitality. Mm -hmm. So you're, uh, you're a global citizen, but you know Asia very well. And then you came to Indonesia, and now you are at the helm of one of Indonesia's biggest companies. How did you, what were you looking forward to, and how did you see Indonesia in relations, not just to the you know, neighboring ASEAN countries, but to the world when you started? So when I started, you know, this was uh, 2019, January, I landed here. And, and, you know, the first mandate I took was you just travel. For first 100 days, I was traveling around 20 days. Two things came out very clearly for me. One, uh, that Indonesia is not just uh, Jakarta or Bali. Mm -hmm. You know, Indonesia... Yeah, it's a big place. It's a big place. 70,000 islands. Another data point in terms of demographic, it is equal to Europe, correct? So, the opportunity of Indonesia is significant, A. B, Indosat is a very iconic brand. You know, I started my career with Coca-Cola. I'm a very brand, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've seen the power of brand. Here, when I tra traveled to Kachamatan, Kabupatan level, everyone knew. So. It's a very iconic brand, one of the brand who connected Indonesia to the world. So people have a lot of expectation. So these were my two first key takeaway, you know, when I started my journey in Indonesia. Okay. And Indosat itself, like you said, it's been a brand and it's been a brand for a long time in Indonesia itself. Actually, my first, you know, sort of telecommunications, you know, back in the days uh, when we first started having a cell phone. I mean, my number was an Indosat number. And since then, you know, the company's evolved. So because of the technology's evolved, telecommunications itself has evolved. And how do you see the evolution of the telecommunication industries in the last, you know, decade? And how do you see the evolution of Indosat itself? Now, Indosat is called Indosat Uridu Hutchison. So it's sort of gone through many different changes in you know, different brands, so to speak. And tell us a little bit more about yeah. that evolution. So I've been in the industry for two decades. Yeah, two decades I've been in the industry. We have seen the 2G era, 3G yeah. era, 4G. Now we are talking 5G. People have started talking 6G. Mm -hmm. I think the key thing here is uh, when when I started, it is all about connecting people. You know, mm -hmm. having a phone itself was a lifestyle statement. When mm -hmm. you would have had Absolutely, that six-digit yeah. number, mm -hmm. it was a status symbol. Yeah, and that was back in the 1990s, even like, like mid 1990s. I, I, I still remember my first Siemens phone. Such it a was big really phone. big. Yeah. It was like you know yeah. thousands of dollars and, and, in price. And we want it to be big so that we can show off. You know. <laughs> When you get an incoming call also, you have to pay. That was the era when you make a call. And, and, and from there till today, I think uh, the industry has moved from just being a connectivity. Connectivity still plays a very important role in this whole world of digital and AI. Mm. But the role of the industry has become very pivotal, they see. And I have to tell you, COVID was a silver lining for the industry. So two data points I'll give you. You know, during 2015 and all, I used to get pained when the industry, as per GSMA report, was even below tobacco mm -hmm. in terms of respect. We are putting so much of money on the infrastructure. Why we are even below tobacco? And when I reflected, I think it was a bit self-inflective, you know. 
bath services, roaming charges, people had a lot of trust issue. Having said that, while the industry was battling to fix those things, COVID came and during COVID, government, policy maker, they all understood the important role. You know, whether you talk about work from home, yeah. study from home, well, or we, even getting our entertained. Our dependency on Correct. technology and online, it's everything internet. Is especially on the telecom industry. Mm. So if you look at Indonesia, the digital highways are data. And who is bringing that? It is the telco industry. Mm -hmm. So the industry post-COVID and during COVID suddenly got the respect back. We were treated, I, I was so touched, I was invited like uh, health hospital people mm -hmm. that you are on the forefront of, because without yeah, ab connectivity, you can't even do health. Yeah. So, so from being just a mode of communication, now it has become a digital enabler, mm -hmm. a, a enabler to the digital vision of Indonesia, to the region, to the world. So, so that has been one big change, especially from the industry point of view. Mm -hmm. When I talk about Indosat, you are right, you know. Indosat, from being a state-owned first, yeah. first company to be listed in New York Stock Exchange. Once upon a time. Yes, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, all our offices mm -hmm. are on very iconic locations, you know. Uh, let me put it this way, you know, uh, when merger was happening, People were telling me, oh, we have seen a lot, satellite Indo yes. and all those things we have seen. So the question was, you want to become like Hutchison? People used to tell me, you want to uh, be like Hong Kong or you will be like Doha, which is Oridu Group. Yeah. I think that was a pivoting moment. We said, we want to make sure we build on the strong legacy of Indosat. We want to bring the Indosat culture to the forefront. Okay. Hold that thought. We want to build on the legacy of Indosat. What is the legacy? I mean, we take a little break here, Vikram, but we will continue this conversation. Dan tetaplah bersama kami. Inside with Desi Anwar akan segera kembali. Bersama Insai Videsi Anwar, saya juga masih ditemani Vikram Sinha, President Direct and CEO of Indosat Uridu Hutchison. Vikram, Indosat Uridu Hutchison. There was a time when it was just Indosat, right? And the merger became, uh, you became President uh, and CEO uh, back in the beginning of 2022. Okay, we're talking about um, the the culture, the evolution of Indosat itself as a company and having uh, somebody like you with uh, a global background and obviously with a lot of knowledge in the telecommunication industry. Tell us the significance uh, of the merger that we do, uh, Hutchison, Indosat, and you're talking about the Indosat legacy and the brand. What is it about, the significance, and what does it mean to the evolution, transformation, and future of Indosat. When I say Indosat legacy, I am talking about living up to people expectation. When I go to villages, people expect Indosat to do much more because they have seen it, they have grown with that brand. You know, you spoke about you having a fixed digit number. Yep, absolutely. The journey is, how do you, from a state-owned, a bit bureaucratic, become an agile, forward-looking, inspiring company where you have a good balance of uh, the average age of the organization was on Uridu Indosat side, 45. C.K. Hutchison was younger. Mm -hmm. So how do you blend everything together and you have an opportunity to define a culture and value system what you want to be. So when I talk about the legacy, I talk about trust and living up to people expectation, 
when I talk about mm -hmm. how we need to pivot, it's an opportunity. You know, please understand when you get into a culture, my number one learning was you have to make sure you integrate the culture within first six months. Otherwise, it is always a two organization. So we wrote what we want to be. We spoke about our larger purpose. What really helped me was, if you look at Indonesia, the people really connect when you talk about the bigger purpose. So we said that being part of Indosat, I still call, if you look at my logo, 80% space is on Indosat. So mm -hmm. I don't call it Indosat or Idu Hutchison. I just call Indosat. Sometime in well, Singapore. Well, the brand is still very strong, obviously. Correct. Yeah. Sometime in Singapore, I say IOH. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but I think the key point, Desi, I'm trying to make is, it's an opportunity to define the value system. And we started with our larger purpose of not only connect, but to empower every Indonesian. I have to tell you the support which I got from my employee. I have close to 3,500 employees. I can see how they are rallying behind me. It doesn't excite people. <laughs> you want to connect 100 will become 101 million. No. But when you talk about the larger purpose, which is really inspiring, and this is where I got the support. And what we said that we want to build a company which is future ready. Now it has been 26 months. Yesterday I had my annual general meeting. And we said that from integration, we move to transformation. And yesterday we said we want to be an AI native tech co. It is not about just being connectivity. It is about a tech co, a technology company, which is AI enabled. So I think that has been the journey in last 28 months. Yes, and of course, you know, AI is you know, the next big Thing. And this is something, of course, that uh, you know we, we should take this conversation. You know, how and where does Indonesia um, fit into all this, and what do we want to do in order to uh, basically become a player in all this innovation? But let me go back to the your larger purpose and the values. And the company has seen its sort of ups and downs. And and, and I still remember, um, you know, there were the other players obviously and it became um you know during covid our dependence on communication increased our dependence on technology our dependence on all things internet increased but the larger purpose how has it differed and and the values so that you can actually do this transformation that makes indosat uh, profitable but also a company that is, you know, that plays a bigger role in Indonesia, in the society. I think you made a very important point of profitable, sustainable, profitable. Mm -hmm. You can't uh, do things if you yourself is not sustainable. How can I talk about a larger purpose of empowering Indonesia if the health of the company is not sustainable? So when I started this whole journey, you know, we made a few guiding principles. One of the guiding principles was that we want to work with a maximized mindset. We want to make 1 plus 1 equal to 11. Growth mindset. Yeah. You know, it's a very different. Second, we said we will always put more priority on experience. Customer don't care. You are merging, you are not merging. What matters to them is, is my much, experience. How much is going to cost me? And, and, uh, I, and I'll be very honest with you, more than cost, because what is the cost of mobile? I think what customer want is how the connectivity is helping me be more productive, helping mm -hmm. me do a lot of productive work. Yeah, at the, the friction speed of, of my point. internet, Correct. the bandwidth, now, now you are, the signal. The, the like whole experience, the if you are in your bedroom, you want to stream something, you are watching. Yeah. So we were very, in fact, my single-minded priority was experience, marvelous mm -hmm. experience, experience for my employee, for my customer, or even partner. And the whole thing was revolving around larger purpose. So when we started this journey, Desi, 
we were put on negative watch list by Moody's and Fitch. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame them because historically mergers have suffered. Yep. You know, January I started, February report came, negative watch list. Within 12 months, they put us on neutral mm -hmm. after looking at our number. So how is it now? Now it is double A plus. Double A this plus. This has happened first time in the world. Within two so years well from negative watch to neutral to double A plus. You know, I have to tell you, uh, day before yesterday, I got a report uh, from one of the prominent consultant that in terms of TSR, total shareholder return, we are trending close to 80%. So the point which I'm trying to say is when you drive larger purpose, other things also happen. You know, it is important to have the larger purpose and do it in a very genuine manner. You know? And an increase in market penetration? Yes. So, so Increase in the, in the number of users? You look at all the metrics, you know, uh, you look at all the, we just announced our uh, result first quarter, you know, whether it is EBITDA, free cash flow, net profit. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we announced our dividend. That's good. So you got so, big so bonuses for <laughs> Indus <laughs> from the shareholders. See, see, again, Desi, I'll say that, you know, we all like bonus, but we don't come to office every day for bonus. Uh, yeah, well, no, you work from home for bonus. <laughs> no, <laughs> but again, I want to bring you back. We all come to office for the larger purpose. Yeah. There has to be something more meaningful you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. You know. and, and I think you've, you've made a good point. The larger purpose is important, but profitability, you cannot realize profitability. You, know, you, you, can, you cannot achieve your larger prof, uh, purpose without being a profitable company, and that, and that is a very important... This is the point. In, and, and I see now that the, the industry is also getting very crowded. Let's take a little break, but I want to know that more about the journey, how you become from sort of a negative kind of rated company to now the double A plus, and what does it mean to the kind of service and products that the, your uh, company is actually focusing on. Jadi, jangan kemana-mana dulu, tetaplah bersama Inside with Desi Anwar. Kita akan segera kembali. Kembali bersama Insight with Desi Anwar di studio ada Vikram Sinha, President Director and CEO of Indosat Uwidu Hutchison. Dan Vikram sudah menjadi Presiden dan CEO sejak awal tahun 2022 dan sekarang Indosat merupakan salah satu perusahaan yang sangat profitable. Yeah, it's a, you understand that part, yeah? Profitable. Now. Tell me a little bit more about the journey to becoming a double A plus, but what does it mean in terms of of the evolution or transformation to the product and services and how does it sort of match with the evolution of telecommunications as well as the big uh, telecommunication trends that we are now seeing i mean basically in the last few years especially since covid you mentioned it is our dependency on digital technology Innovation in digital technologies are grown by leaps and bounds. And as in my introduction, AI, artificial intelligence, it's something that is basically going to be the next big thing. So tell us a little bit about your. So, you know, when, when we started this journey, especially post merger, first thing we said that this merger is good for Indonesia. So, first data point to prove that before merger, the industry was growing 2%, 1, 1 and half, 2. Mm -hmm. Post merger, the industry is growing anywhere between 4 and 5%. I think, as you said, uh, we all have understood the importance of the industry. It is very important mm -hmm. that the health of the industry is good. Yeah. So, this is one data point. Second data point is... Let's look at our customer. You know, in every merger, the question which I was asked, how many customer you will lose? This is what has happened. Mm -hmm. Whether you will lose 5% or 25. There are examples of as has I as 25 and average 5 to 7%. You know, we were able to gain first year 8 million new customer. Mm -hmm. So the point is that 
all my third party reports are telling that my customers are getting better experience what does that mean they are getting better indoor coverage the biggest thing they see which this integration of our network brought i have incremental coverage of close to 40 million in rural mm -hmm. that really touched me that's know? a larger purpose of connectivity yes in indonesia so not only in metropolitan cities connecting rural and deep rural that's not easy mm. you know especially closing the digital gap correct, digital gap so so these are some of the things which i told you you know as the larger purpose but in terms of financial matrix the other important thing for the industry is arpu you know this this the industry arpu is not even 3 dollar mm -hmm. and and it is extremely important for the digital economy if you look at the digital economy of indonesia today the gross merchandise value is 70 billion by 2026 it will be around 150 billion and the enabler to that is telco industry so so you know we have to look at the larger purpose how some of these things is helping indonesia helping indosat mm -hmm. helping my customer mm -hmm. but so, that the but that at the end of the day you need to make you know big changes also to the company to the structure to how things get done but at the same time you also need to step up the game in terms of the the, the service that you provide the innovation and the, the technology that you employ how how do you do that in the space of 26 months this is uh, a very good question i'll have to tell you my 80% time was spent on people integration first time i am telling you this because when i talk to analyst investor they are only focus on synergy value whether you save 300 million 400 million what what is behind it they see i am i'm so happy that you asked this question it is about people so the first challenge i had was how do i merge two organization mm -hmm. where nobody feel that there is a bias you know so you know you have to treat yourself that you are in a glass house you have to do some hard decisions also but you have to do it in a fair respectful manner mm -hmm. so so maximum time was on people setting up culture and second was integrating the network because customer has to get the better service yeah. and what it delivered is significantly better customer experience in rural better indoor experience it is not easy you know the other part was we kept investing so on an average every year we invest around 12 to 13 trillion rupee capex so you know you keep hearing some of these on uh, what on on putting the infrastructure my network mm -hmm. my it my you know investing on people so so my this year guidance is 12 trillion last year i invest 12.5 trillion so my range you know uh, uh, so in 28 month i would have already invested 2 billion us dollar you like of course to see this investment you know realized and you know tripled at the end of it right so 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 the point which i'm trying to say is sometime when you see people coming from silicon valley and making statement oh we will invest 1 billion 1.5 we are doing it we are keeping our head down we are doing it consistently for indonesia and and the good thing is uh, when you execute your plan properly it is sustainable okay. now my mar when merger happened my market cap was 2.3 billion US dollar now it is close to 5 billion my goodness so so That's it's a very sustainable yeah. model it's very sustainable and and, and yeah. what what do you have a particular target particularly for this year and uh, the coming year so look uh, uh, what generally we do is to ensure that we are driving the industry growth so when i announced my result uh, my ebitda grew close to 20% year on year you know that is where i want to say it is all about being in right place at right time indonesia has opportunity indonesia has so much of opportunity i keep talking about data point if you look at rural indonesia you know there are close to 21 million first time internet user between now and 2027 how many country has such opportunity there are very few in the world so i always 
feel that we are very blessed. I keep telling my team that uh, we are in Indonesia. We have so much of opportunity to yeah. unlock that. Yeah, but do you see the uh, changing of the profile of your consumers and your customers? Yes. As a, uh, what is it like now? I, I think uh, the big change which we are seeing is two. One, we are seeing more and more high value customer because today uh, we had one challenge earlier. There was a real, I always say perception is reality. When somebody like you, who is my Indosat customer, loyal six digit, mm -hmm. when you go to ex Java, when you go to Eastern Indonesia, our network was not there. So you are always feeling, oh, when I mm -hmm. go, so whenever Mudik used to happen, people yeah, go, like, you know. Oh, I can't get a signal. Yes. Oh, no, you better use this one. <laughs> yes. So I'll not say 100%, but at least because of my integration of network, I have significantly bigger coverage in X Java also, you know, one. And second, my most of the investment is going to plug that gap. So my last eight month, one of the biggest focus was mm -hmm. Lombok and Nusra. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at even Papua, you know, today after okay. Merger also. A lot of blank spots in that. Yes, significantly. So, so one of our objective is that by end of 2026, we are able to give a very good, you go anywhere, Indosat will work. So that has been one of my mission to achieve and that need a lot of investment for sure, but it also need good execution because the challenges are very unique in Indonesia, DC. Mm. To connect the transport you know, how do you yep. connect these island? How do you, you need the fiber, you need the transport, you need all these new technology which we are trying to leverage so that we are able to give similar experience even in the most deepest part, you know, an island, uh, not only in big cities. Yeah, absolutely. And this is also in line with the, you know, the government's wish in order to create, to close the digital gap and also to create um, you know, equity and economic right. equity uh, and social equity around uh, the countries, particularly in the outlying areas. But you mentioned that the magic word there, you know, technology, and this is, uh, I hear the evolution is no longer just a telecommunication company, but it's a technology, you know, that, so the focus is on technology. So we take a little break, but, you know, let's, let's think about in terms of this technological uh, innovation. Tetaplah bersama kami, Insight with Desi Anwar akan segera kembali. Kembali bersama Insight with Desi Anwar di Studio 3 ada Fikram Sina, President Director of CEO and CEO of Indosat. We do Hutchison or Indosat as we all know it, very familiar. Uh, and also, it's a company that we all want to be proud of. Anything that has Indo <laughs> in the front, you know, it, it's, it's something that, of course, we want to promote. Now, having you a global, you know, citizen with global experience and, you know, making hopefully Indosat also a global you know, company and I'm interested uh, in seeing the evolution of the way we use you know, your, your core product which is you know, cellular um, telecommunications and in the beginning we use our mobile phones to call people right now we don't. We don't call with our mobiles. We we use it to, you know, scroll <laughs> on our social media, and now we use it to, you know, get information on Chat GPT, and then we use it for all sorts of things. You know, whether it's you know shopping, ordering food, and everything that has to do with uh, yeah, the internet of things. Now, when we talk about the technology, uh, technological innovation. What does it mean to the transformation of the kind of product and services that a company like Indosat brings? But also, I see that there's more and more player. You know, it's getting quite 
crowded in you know, the telecommunication industry. How, where do you stand in all of this, Ikram? I, I think uh, the way the way I look at it, that uh, last decade, and I'll talk about pre-COVID. You know, when when 3G happened, uh, I I was launching in one part of India. We will go and show to people that you know you can do YouTube, you can, you know, we'll show the song. Yeah. But who got benefited was likes of WhatsApp and Netflix. You know, so we, we became a dumb pipe. When 4G happened, you know, there are a lot of other examples mm -hmm. who, of, you know, uh, Amazons and all. So, so the one piece uh, they see is that uh, being in the industry for 20 years, one of the thing is that how companies like Indosat can play also up on the value chain. When I am helping any of my customers solve their daily challenges and while doing that, how I can get a fair fare because if I am not sustainable, how can I do things which mm -hmm. is linked to it. So I will give you one example, you know. Today, when I am focusing so much on rural, one of the challenges in rural is financial inclusivity yeah. yeah so we with our partners I am able to help my customer not only get connected also get small ticket loan you know and this is how the telco data the telco information my app I have close to 40 million app customer we don't call ourselves super app but we have 40 million mm -hmm. so I am just telling you being a part of not just don't think of Indosat as, okay, I need connectivity, I want. I want to be a part of your daily lifestyle, you know, and I'm able to help you solve your challenges. And, and while doing that, how do I get a fair share? So there are many examples, you know, security. Today, whatever is connected needs to be secured. The more technology is evolving, it also comes with risk. So, so how do we play a part there? How do I need to build capability mm -hmm. and how do I stay focused to solving real problem? We don't have to get too obsessed with technology. What we need to be obsessed is, are we listening to our customer? Mm -hmm. Are we helping them solve real challenges? And am I able to do it in scale? Mm -hmm. So that has been our focus. I will genuinely like to invite you to my experience center. today. In Indosat, you know, in, in the KPPTI, our office mm -hmm. is, is a very iconic place. We have a marvelous experience center. When you come here, you will see all IoT solution, all solutions for mining, you know, Industry 4.0 for enterprises. We can't do it alone. We need right like-minded partner who work with us and have that whole innovation focus. Uh, they see when I talk about Indosat AI native techco, I have put across certain budget only for innovation. And that innovation I am not doing from a valuation game. I am doing to understand my customer better and solve real challenges and do it at scale. Because Indonesia is a big country. We, we are now 100 million customer. So whatever we do, mm -hmm. it it has to be scale up. When I am with my friends in Singapore, I said, don't don't waste my time. I am not interested on anything which is 1 million, 2 million. It has to scale up. It has to really impact many, many of my customer positively. So so that is the mindset, Desi. You so, know? But what and does it mean when it comes to the strategy then? Because obviously, like you said, you cannot do everything alone, but you do need to invest in innovation. You do need to upscale your technology. And, you know, the next, the, the big thing is the, you know, the requirement for bigger bandwidth and also digital technology in all areas of our life. You mentioned finance, but also there's health. There's also in education. There's also in, you know, it's a lot more than just telecommunications. Tell me a little bit more about I, I think, the strategy. Uh, let me start with the strategy. So our strategy is that we want to make sure we work with partner. We don't want to do everything on our own. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we have been working with likes of Google, Cisco. So when it comes to security, 
we have been working with Cisco, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure we bring the best, how we work together on my capabilities, their capabilities and solve real problems. NVIDIA, you know, yeah. this is so important. You know, we all talk about AI wave, but mm -hmm. behind that, all chat GBT or whatever yeah. is the GPUs of NVIDIA. So we were very uh, thrilled when they choose us as the NCP mm -hmm. for Indonesia. What we wanted to make sure that when GPUs are coming to Asia, Indonesia should be on the forefront. So, so these are examples. So, in mm -hmm. terms of strategy, we want to work with partner and our guiding principle is that we want like-minded partner who is aligned to our larger purpose that it has to be good for Indonesia, it has to be good for our customer and it also has to be mm -hmm. equally good and respected for the partner on ground. What happened in past that I don't blame anyone else, we were inward looking. We lost that opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, because we were so overconfident, inward looking, not looking at it. So this is one big shift on strategy. And the result of that is that, you know, we are able to play on a value pool where we were not playing earlier. So, so I don't look at many things what you see as competition. Mm -hmm. I see this decade is more about collaboration, less about competition. And, and to the industry is getting crowded, you have to acknowledge that. And I, I have a different view on this, you know. What you see for telco industry, that eventually uh, it is maximum two or three. You know, look at the world, even extreme case like India, from 12 operator, now mm -hmm. they have landed to three. People say it is two and a half or three, whatever. Indonesia, we had five. Now we have got to four. There are there are uh, discussions uh, that. You so know, what is the ideal number? I mean, two or three? Because, well, one I, obviously you can't no, because no, it's no, a monopoly. No, Five, even. maybe too many. But I think the key point here is that telco business is of scale. If you don't have scale, the cost to serve the unit economics doesn't work. So what you have seen across the world that anywhere between three and two. You know, but big players. Yes, mm. strong. It is good for the country, you know, because please understand that it is an enabler to the digital economy. The, you, you talk about all unicorn, any unicorn. Mm. It is all built on the backbone of data and who is providing data. Yeah. So the role is very important. But, but I, I just have to say that my view is it is not about competition. It is about collaboration. One, I don't think so industry is getting crowded you need to be very focused that where you have the right to play and what value you are bringing to your customer. Okay, and that note, we'll end this uh, conversation for the moment, but focus and value, I think this is where we can, you know, get further insights from you, Vikram, where you want to take Indosat, particularly as you want to, Indosat to be a global player. Tetaplah bersama kami, Insight with Desi Anwar akan segera kembali. Kembali bersama Insight with Desi Anwar di studio ada Vikram Sinha, President Director and CEO of Indosat Uwidu. Hutchison, and we're coming to the last segment of our conversation, and I, I think it's been very, very insightful because Indosat has been around in Indonesia since, you know, God knows <laughs> how long. And it, I see now that the transformation, uh, not just uh, in line with technology transformation and the, te the telecommunication uh, the evolution itself, but the company has evolved. But we're talking about technology, we're talking about innovation. When I see the players, the, the global players, I can just name like this Elon Musk, right? And there is Mark Zuckerberg, and, and you know, there's the Amazon, there's the, the, the Google. These are the names that we, you know, are synonymous with technology. And uh, recently we had Elon Musk coming to the World Water Forum in Bali and, you know, touting his product, which is the low orbit um, satellite you know, his Starlink. Just 
going back to the larger purpose and also Indosat role and potential uh, to actually also increase Indonesia's brand on the global stage. What are your thoughts and where can we really, you know, step up our game so we are part of these, you know, global players that we're not just, you know, the spectators and the bystanders, you know, buying everybody else's products, but we're also there with the innovators. And Correct. I, I think you made a very important point, DC. Indonesia, we, you know, facts, people talk, about yes we are the fourth largest in terms of population by 2030 we will be the tenth largest in terms of GDP five percent is given do we have the potential to go up mm -hmm. to eight yes I, I think the key message here is that we have to have the ambition but execution is the key execution execution mm -hmm. is the key you know because it's a scale country you know so right from policy mm -hmm. to private public partnership but one thing I keep telling to all the big boys you named it uh, I'll be very honest mm -hmm. with you none of them have been able to crack the full potential of Indonesia mm -hmm. oh, why is that is it because, because it's a Indonesia is a blind spot we're not really you know putting ourselves out there first fundamental mistake they do is fourth largest country in terms of population but when they do they don't have a country strategy they club Indonesia into mm -hmm. Southeast Asia you know they will do India strategy mm -hmm. when they talk about Asia they will have China India mm -hmm. but I think it has it is high time if they really want to you know get it right they need to have the country strategy they can't club it mm -hmm. under Southeast Asia Indonesia deserves to stand out Indonesia has the opportunity and potential second I think whatever they do, they also need to make sure it is good for Indonesia. They can't talk about that their market cap is 2 trillion, 3 trillion. How is it good for Indonesia and people in Indonesia? And also how is it fair for partners on ground? By the way, they need partners like us. Mm -hmm. I think they have also understood. So I, I think Are you on their radar? I mean, you've Look, met I, some of these people. I, 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 I get a lot of respect because of my scale. Uh, I'll be very honest with you. They, they, are, they look at scale. And uh, today, when they look at us, we are one of the operators. There are only 10 operators in the world who is in the 100 million customer mm -hmm. club. So that gets me a lot of attention. So I have been telling them that, you know, let's have a country strategy. Let's work together to see what is first good for Indonesia yeah, and then how it is fair for partners like us on ground. In Europe you keep hearing even India has started talking that uh, all these boys, big boys need to contribute to the capex. Every year I told you I am putting close to a billion dollar you know to carry some yeah, of their show traffic. Show us the money. <laughs> so, so, so how we work together which is fair, correct? I, I think wo we have to have that approach where you have to be fair in treating the country where we operate and do the best and also the partner on ground. So that theme I am more confident. I am working very closely with the names which you took uh, and I, I think my message to them is always mm -hmm. that let's connect with our larger purpose. Many of them have yeah. same same theme. But execution is the key. Let's demonstrate tangible value to people, our customers on ground, and how it benefits the overall country vision. Uh, that has been my request. Yeah, but on the other side of the coin, I mean, it, it's good for them to pay attention to us. Obviously, this is something that we need. But what can Indonesia do? And uh, we have a new government coming uh, in soon, and maybe this is a, a good time to for you as the president and the, the CEO of Indosat, what does Indonesia need to do more in order to bring ourselves to the attention, to the notice of these big players in terms, for example, um, you know, policy. You talk about policies, you know, the kind of policies that would attract 
uh, investors coming in and also our human capital. You mentioned over 100 million, but how do you see that demographic bonus uh, for us to actually uh, you know, maximize that potential? And of course, you know, the kind of infrastructure that we still need to uh, lay down and to build in order for us to be a global player. The number one thing I'll say is to invest on human capital. I have to tell you, it will not work. No technology will work if we are not able to invest on our human capital. Indonesia can't be seen as a consumption market. We need to move up the value chain as a developer market. Indonesia should have the ambition and has the potential to create that human capital which can serve the region and world mm -hmm. instead of just consuming. So, so I, I think uh, the, the number one priority, I'll say, how we can all work together on investing on human capital. So and is this something that in the South that you're doing, you know, helping, training I, I, and getting I, the... Uh, significantly, you know, uh, one of my biggest focus is to invest on human capital. We have several initiatives, but we want to really do it in scale. Our, uh, one of the things which we are trying to do is our AI center of excellence, you know. We are working with partners like NVIDIA, Google, Cisco, you know. Just now I announced with MasterCard our cyber security center of excellence, IDB Bandung. So really one of our key focus at Indosat is how do we invest on human capital? And I think that will help Indonesia move forward in terms of GDP growth. In terms of policy, I, I think one uh, continuity in a, in a large country, continuity yeah. and, you know, that has been the theme. Uh, do, do we have a good policy or do we have the right policies at the moment or do you still I think, the, think uh, that the business climate needs to be improved? There is always an opportunity to improve. But uh, last five years, I have seen a lot of improvement. Things like omnibus law and all is all move in the right direction. What is important is executing things on ground properly in a timely manner. A, B, having a more clear continuity because investor needs predictive yeah, continuity. Absolutely. You know, even even uh, you know, in terms of ease of doing business, I was working with. Uh, Berlin on OSS project, you know, so I, I understood a lot, you know, it was not an easy project. The intent is right, intent was to bring Indonesia on the top in terms of ease of doing business, how a small and medium enterprise can get a license within minute, mm -hmm. you know. So, so some of these things is much more to do with execution, a sharp, clear execution mm -hmm. and also using technology to help people at scale, you know, a lot of things earlier which would have not. Now AI is coming, Gen AI is coming, you know, how you can make use of it to be more productive, how you can mm -hmm. make use of it to create new opportunity. I have to tell you, AI is now, it is not coming. Yes, it's it already here. Already here. Mm -hmm. So what we need to focus is that we don't miss the bus. We don't only... We should be driving the bus. We okay, should I be hear. driving. We should be the safer. And just very quickly on the infrastructure, I mean, what, what needs to be, you know, done like yesterday, actually, when it comes to infrastructure in order to make sure that Indonesia is stepping up its game and, you know, increasing the scalability? I, I think uh, policies around power, when you talk about uh, AI, data center plays a very critical role. I'm just giving you one example. How can we have policies which attract uh, Indonesia as an infrastructure country. Mm -hmm. Indonesia is blessed in many ways. So we need to see how we position it and, and ensure that when it comes to Asia, this how is How would you like place. to see Indonesia being positioned in this I, aspect? I personally you know, uh, feel that Indonesia has the potential to be a good combination of infrastructure and developer. You know, when I look at Vietnam, the the people sitting in Singapore says that, oh, it's a developer market. The human talent, they do precise work best. That can happen at a much bigger scale in Indonesia. When they look at Malaysia, oh, a lot of infrastructure because they have mm -hmm. surplus power. Indonesia also has surplus power. Yeah. Indonesia is also moving. So to your question, you know, 
Indonesia is a better infra plus developer, a very good human skill with a lot of infrastructure, not a consumption only market. As long as you know, we, fo we focus, <laughs> we have the right policies and also we implement yeah. uh, these things. Very quickly, our conversation is coming to an end. Just you know, if you, five years from here, you know, where do you see Indosat? We, we want to be an AI native tech co. AI if, native tech. This is very important, Desi, for me to play a larger purpose of helping Indonesia be on the forefront of AI. First, I need to do it in Indosat. So that journey has started. So, so that is how we want to be seen. And, and, you know, a very young and old, a balance of workforce. In terms of uh, number, I told you that uh, when we closed our 2023, our EBITDA number was 1.6 billion. In next five years, we want to double that. We want to be a company with a $3 billion of EBITDA value. And we want to be on the forefront of driving the industry mm -hmm. growth, how we can make sure yeah. that the industry is healthy and which is helping the larger purpose of digital Indonesia, yeah. the digital vision. Okay, let's drink to that. <laughs> What's good for the company, we hope, of course, should be good for the whole country. Okay, and Vikram, thank you so much for your insight. And I will be following your journey for the next five years and put some of this, you know, dreams into reality for Indonesia to becoming, you know, one of the biggest AI players. Hopefully, you know, maybe not in the world, but at least in the region under your leadership. So. Thank you once again Thank you for so your much. time. Ya, demikian Inside with Desi Anwar kali ini. Anda juga dapat menyaksikan tayangan ini di CNNIndonesia.com dan di YouTube CNN Indonesia Inside with Desi Anwar. Sampai jumpa, stay safe. Bye-bye.